So in this MLB news and rumors video, I want to talk about some of the latest regarding the 2023-24 MLB offseason. I want to talk about some of the latest news involving free agency, the latest news regarding the trade market, basically all things MLB. I'm going to be going over in this video. Let's get right into it. So the first MLB news item for today actually takes us to a player that's a little bit underrated in my personal opinion on the open market, that being Jorge Soler. So 358 Baseball on Instagram made a post which is captioned the Arizona Diamondbacks, Boston Red Sox, Toronto Blue Jays, and Seattle Mariners are reportedly showing interest in free agent slugger Jorge Soler per Mark Feinstein. Now, Jorge Soler actually had himself a pretty awesome year this past year for the Marlins. Uh, in uh, you know Last year in 2023, Jorge Soler put up a 1.8 war season, 126 hits, 36 home runs, a 250 average, 75 runs scored, seven, or sorry, 75 uh, runs batted in, 77 runs scored, one stolen base and on base uh, percentage of 341. 512 slugging an OPS of 853 and an OPS plus of 128. So for Jorge Soler, who's going to be 32 years old next year in 2024, this guy could definitely be in line for a multi-year contract at around that $20 million per year mark. Uh, if your team out there looking for some more power hitting, Jorge Soler can definitely accomplish that at a bit of a discount compared to some other players on the market, uh, like a Cody Bellinger, for instance. Jorge Soler could actually be a better uh, bang for your buck signing, in my personal opinion. Now, the teams that were mentioned in this uh, uh, post by 358 Base Baseball are the Diamondbacks. They can make a lot of sense as well. Uh, they traded for Yuji Henio Suarez a couple weeks ago now, and they want to add some more power to their lineup. So I think Jorge Soler going to Arizona could be a pretty nice fit. Uh, the Boston Red Sox have been you know, way too quiet so far this offseason, so they could definitely be in line uh, to potentially get a slugger to their team. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, of course, would make a lot of sense because last year in 2023, uh, their power hitting was pretty non-existent. So if they're able to get a DH or a player that can play in the corner outfields and hit around 35, 40 plus home runs next year, that is exactly what this team needs, in my personal opinion. And probably the team that I think actually makes the most sense on this list especially with some of their moves they made, you know, the last couple days now, are the Seattle Mariners. Uh, the Mariners have traded away players like Yuji Henio Suarez. Uh, they made some other moves as well. This team hasn't really gotten that much better, in my opinion, but they're definitely going to be in line to do that, especially too, uh, with Robbie Ray getting traded to the Giants a couple days ago now. Um, I think it was yesterday, actually, if I'm not mistaken. They clear up that cap space, and honestly speaking, I think uh, Jorge Soler going to Seattle, being more of a power bat to replace Teoscar Hernandez, could be a nice addition to this team. And a bit of a, a better, a better. It could be a better addition to this team, honestly, and all things considered. So uh, the Jorge Soler market is definitely going to be heating up. I fully do imagine. Uh, I think he could very well be getting a like a multi-year contract, probably three to four years around that twenty million dollar mark. And if he goes to Toronto, uh, Seattle, Boston, or, or or Arizona, he could be a pretty awesome fit. So make sure to leave all your thoughts down below regarding where you think Jorge Soler is going to be signing this off season. So sticking with free agency for the next news item, I want to talk about a Japanese player that being Shota. Imanaga. So the market for him has been, heating, uh, has been heating up the last couple days now. Uh, once again, 35A Baseball on Instagram made a post which is captioned, the Boston Red Sox, Los Angeles Angels, Chicago Cubs, and San Francisco Giants are reportedly, quote, finalists for Japanese left-handed pitcher uh, Shota Imanaga per Jim Bowden. Now, with the trade happening yesterday of Robbie Ray going to San Francisco, I would probably imagine that they are probably going to be out of the running, I would say, on Shota Imanaga. Is it possible he still goes there? Absolutely. Uh, the Giants wanted to get pretty active this offseason and spend a lot of money to bring some more talent to their team. Uh, they, of course, have uh, have signed you know, Jung Hoo Lee, uh, who's a pretty awesome international player, good contact hitter. Uh, they made the move for Robbie Ray yesterday. They're definitely still in the running, I think I would imagine, uh, for players like Blake Snell as well as Cody Ballinger. So uh, could Imanica be going to uh, the Bay Area and joining the Giants? I would not rule it out, but it's probably unlikely uh, with the move that happened yesterday with Robbie Ray. Uh, the Red Sox sort of like like what happened with uh, Jorge Soler. They have been pretty quiet so far in free agency. They just traded away Chris Sale as well. So could they use starting pitcher uh, in their lineup? They absolutely could as a replacement there. The Los Angeles Angels, they can make a lot of sense as well, perhaps overpaying given the most money financially speaking because they're in desperate need of some more talent on this team with them losing out on someone like Shoei Otani for the price of absolutely nothing. It's probably in the Angels' best interest if they don't want to completely rebuild this team, which also has point towards them probably not doing. 
to get some good talent in free agency, like a Shota Imanaga. So that could be a good fit there. And the Cubs. The Cubs have been a bit of a head scratcher so far this offseason. They haven't brought Bellinger back yet, although it's probably going to happen, I still think, at this point. But I could be shifting their attention towards the pitching market and getting a player like Shota Imanaga. It's very possible as well. So in case you guys are unfamiliar with who Shota Imanaga is, he's a 30-year-old left-handed pitcher from Japan. I believe last year he played for Yokohama in the JPCL. And last year in 2023, he put together a seven win, five loss season, a 2.66 ERA. And honestly speaking, had a pretty reasonable and solid season. So this guy could definitely be commanding north of $20 million on an average annual basis this off season. Just sort of how the market has developed so far. I could very well see him getting like a four or a five year deal around that point. Now, is it going to be any of the teams listed? The Red Sox, the Angels, the Cubs, or the Giants? I guess only time will tell. So for the next MLB news item, I'm actually mentioned this player a couple minutes ago, but I want to talk about more Tiasco. Hernandez possibly taking his talents out east and joining the Boston Red Sox. So uh, Tyler Milliken on Twitter or X tweeted out. It's a pretty long tweet, so just bear with me. According to Ken Rosenthal and JC McCaffrey, which is Jen McCaffrey, a Red Sox beat writer uh, for The Athletic, the Boston Red Sox prefer to tackle other areas of the roster and reduce payroll before committing to a free agent like Teoscar Hernandez. Also, quote, several teams have inquired about Masataka Yoshida, and while the Red Sox do not appear to be actively shopping him, they're open to virtually any any ideas as they seek to build a better roster. Looks like the Red Sox are considering a lot of options when it comes to restructuring at their outfield. So the Red Sox have been pretty quiet so far. I know they made a move the other day uh, shipping out Chris Sale to the Atlanta Braves. But other than that, they haven't really made any big time moves to make this team that much better in my personal opinion. Now, if they're able to sign someone like Teoscar Hernandez, it would definitely be a step in the right direction. Last year for Teoscar in 2023 with the Mariners, it actually wasn't that amazing of a season for him. Uh, last year for Teoscar in Seattle, he put up a 2.1 more season, 161 hits, 26 home runs, a 258 average, 70 runs scored, 93 RBI, 7 stolen bases, and on base of just 305, 435 slugging, an OPS of 741, and an OPS plus of 106. So, Teoscar really struggled at the plate last year in regards to staying disciplined. He struck out a lot last year. His power numbers were not nearly as high as I'm sure the Mariners were hoping for. And all signs, you know, pointing towards him heading back to Seattle probably aren't there. So I think he's definitely going to be signing somewhere else in free agency. Perhaps if he were to go to Boston and be a corner outfielder piece there, this could mean someone like Yoshida could either be a domino to fall prior to this signing happening or a domino to fall immediately after. Uh, regardless, is there a world where both these players are on the Red Sox next year? Yeah, absolutely. But is it going to happen? I'm not that optimistic because one, they're probably not going to be trading Yoshida unless, of course, the right offer comes to the table. Yoshida was a pretty solid player for the Red Sox last year. Um, and after signing him to a five-year contract for $90 million the year prior, flipping him one year later for some assets could, I guess, be in the cards. And if this were to happen, I think Teoscar would be a nice replacement option there. But I don't know. The Red Sox have been pretty quiet so far. So if you are a Red Sox fan, leave all your thoughts down below. What do you want the team What do you want the team to do this offseason? Do you want them to go out and sign a Teoscar Hernandez? Do you want them to go ahead and sign a pitcher like Shota Imanaga? Do you want them to go ahead and trade away Masataka Yoshida? Leave all your thoughts down below of what you guys think the Boston Red Sox should be doing this offseason as it pertains to free agency as well as the trade market. So for the next MLB news item in this video, I want to talk about a player in Michael A. Taylor who's probably not going to be returning to the Twins and heading somewhere else this offseason. Off season. So MLB deadline news on Twitter or X tweeted out the Los Angeles Angels, San Diego Padres, Boston Red Sox, and Pittsburgh Pirates are among the teams expressing interest in free agent outfielder Michael A. Taylor per by Robert Murray. So in case you guys are unfamiliar, Michael A. Taylor actually had himself a pretty solid year this past year for the Minnesota Twins. Last year in 2023, Michael A. Taylor put up a 1.9 more season, 78 hits, 21 home runs, a 220 average, a 48 run score, 51 RBIs, 13 stolen bases, and on base of uh, 278, 442 slugging, an OPS of 720, and an OPS plus of 94. So not really that amazing of numbers besides his power hitting, I would say. Uh, having 21 home runs last year and 78 hits is pretty impressive, and that's only in 355 at bats as well. So Michael A. Taylor in a full year would have been on pace for like a 30-35 home run season, which is pretty impressive. So if you're a team out there, uh, as mentioned in this uh, in the tweet, uh, like the Angels or the Red Sox or the Padres or the Pirates that want a little bit more power to their team, get a veteran option that can play center field. 
Michael A. Taylor can definitely be that guy at a bit of a discounted price, I would imagine. He's going to be 33 years, old, uh, 33 years old next year. He's been around the MLB for quite some time, is a World Series champion, actually, back in 2019, as well as having won the Gold Glove Award uh, previously in his career in 2021. 20, uh, so Michael A. Taylor can bring some power to the play uh, to the table. He can also bring a little bit of defense as well in center field. So uh, if your team out there looking to, uh, just as we mentioned in the last uh, point here, like the Red Sox are going to reshape their outfield, that could be a possibility. If you're the Angels and you want to slide someone like Mike Trout over to the corner or have him as more of a DH. Michael A. Taylor is a more than capable option uh, in, star in starting uh, center field for them. Uh, the Padres have been pretty gutted so far this offseason, so they can make a lot of sense. Um, and also, you know, mentioned in this week, the Pirates, a bit of a team uh, under the radar, I would say, but they're getting better each and every year. So Michael A. Taylor is a good veteran that can play center field, a very prime position. He can play good defense, hit for some power. And if he can hit next year, 20 to 25 home runs and play good center field, that's going to be an absolute steal. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.